Yeah, the playing the underdog role, I just feel like it fits me. It's, 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 nothing, it's nothing new to me. You know, I had to prove, you know, prove it all my life. You know, and I got to prove it now. Oh, he's in the MAC conference. You know, that's the only reason he's doing it. And it doesn't matter, you know, uh, what people say. You know, it doesn't matter about the size or your weight or how many stars you have. You know, if you just, you know, put in the work and just, and just prove the people wrong, you know, the results going to come. From two-star recruit to NFL prospect, Jared Patterson's football journey is full of doubters, those who wrongly wrote him off, and touchdowns, a lot of touchdowns. In the span of two and a half seasons, since COVID cut his last season short, Jarrett finished with 53 total touchdowns and almost 4,000 career rushing yards, which ranks him first and second all time for University at Buffalo running backs in the respective categories. Now, entering the 2021 NFL Draft, the University at Buffalo alum was one of the few, even from his hometown in Glendale, Maryland, that saw this coming. When I was younger, you know, I played Pop Warner. Uh, I wasn't the player I was back then. Uh, <laughs> you see, see me doing, I definitely had to, you know, uh, grind, grind for it and, you know, work on my skills. My advice to parents that's grooming their, you know, their, their sons or daughters, let your kid, you know, fall in love with the game. I fell in love with it, you know, on my own. And, and you would know your kid loves the game. My eighth grade, you know, going to ninth grade summer, uh, a few of us, you know, got recruited. And, you know, we was grinding that whole summer. And that's why I fell in love with, with the, the grind and just football. And I knew it, it could take you places. The DMV area is no rookie when it comes to high school football. There were tons of powerhouse private schools around. But he and his friends wanted to make a shift in the culture. So they chose St. Vincent Pilate, where his mom would drop him and his twin brother James off on her commute to her job in Baltimore. There, he would play under his future coach and Buffalo alum, Justin Winters. You know, you want to, uh, you know, pick a school, you know, that's fit for you and where you can best succeed and have that good, you know, support system. My first time, you know, visiting the school, they had like little voluntary workouts. And then there, I, I met a coach that goes by Justin Winters. You know, he kind of, you know, showed us the way, you know, what, what it really meant to grind. And like you say, it wasn't a, we wasn't a normal group of eighth graders. Our days were we get up in the morning, uh, have a workout up at, up at St. Vincent Pilate, then have lunch, have another workout, and then go to another field and have another workout. We, sometimes we have like three, three workouts in a day, but it paid off and we really showed, you know, the blueprint was really hard work and what can get you to, to that next level. As a freshman, played varsity, didn't really play offense at all. <laughs> And it's crazy to say that, but I played defense. You know, I was a defense guy, you know. Whatever they, the team needed me, whether I play corner, running back, QB, or, or, or whatever, you know. Even, I played a little bit DN, and it's crazy. Whatever the team needed me, I was just having fun with it, making plays. It wasn't until his sophomore and junior year that his coaches noticed that Jarrett could be special in the backfield. His senior year at Pilate, he rushed for 2,045 yards and scored 23 touchdowns. And like I said, that one uh, senior night game, you know, against Riverdale Baptist, I feel like that really, you know, was an electric game for me. It was crazy. Senior night, last game, uh, I'll play in high school. And just the way it went out, you know, like I said, uh, over 500 total yards, over like five touchdowns. And it's crazy. I had like a interception for 100 yards, a kick return for like 98, like a sack fumble, like, and I recovered the fumble. Like it was just a, it was a blur that night. And it's crazy how that game went because Riverdale we Baptist had uh, some good players too. I remember, I never forget, they had James, James Franklin actually fly on the field because they had recruits on, you know, on our team and their team from Penn State. Just how that whole night went, it was, it was crazy. Even with a spectacular senior year, Jared didn't earn rave reviews from his evaluators, which also meant that not many colleges were knocking on the door. But what would end many athletic journeys was just motivation for him. Yeah, so my rankings uh, coming out of high school, I was. Probably a two-star, two-star, you know, uh, player at, <laughs> on rivals or something like that. Uh, I wasn't ranked in Berlin, wasn't ranked in the country. I was just a, a two-star, you know, and several coaches, uh, you know, Big Ten, ACC, you, you name it, they came through our doors. I heard it all, you know, he's not 
he's a good player, but he's too small. He's not fast enough. And just stuff like that. I just feel like, you know, I'm a dog, you know, and on, the, on the field. You can't teach that. And I have a heart, you know, that, that's bigger than anybody's out there. And I'm not going to be out working. They didn't really see that. They, they just saw the measurables at the time, which, which is, you know, silly to me. But I, I think kids nowadays, uh, they shouldn't really let rankings, you know, and stars uh, affect them. Because at the end of the day, you still have to, you know, go out there on the field or on the court and produce. You know, them stars not going to help you, you know, when them bright lights, you know, turn on. Although his rankings weren't that high, he and his brother still got looks from some colleges. The university at Buffalo had interest in James immediately, but said Jarrett could gray shirt, which means he would have had to miss what would have been his freshman year since they were out of scholarships for that school year. Instead, he and his brother both took the gray shirt year together and used that year off to prepare. It was a hard time, you know, just, you know, seeing your friends go to college and, you know, your former teachers in high school asking you, when are you, when, I thought you were supposed to be in college and just asking you questions and you're trying to explain it to them, but they don't really understand. I was kind of embarrassed at the time, but, you know, I had my brother and uh, my old uh, high school strength coach, Coach Page, he had a plan for us and we followed that plan and we was more than ready when we stepped on campus. You know, uh, they didn't really even know what they had, to be honest. You know, uh, they had to, I had to kind of show them, you know, and I started to play, I played Rutgers, and I think I was like the third game. Had a good game, 100 yards, you know, with two touchdowns. But then I really, really took off Central Michigan game, also I had a big game. I think after that game, they just kind of let me rock out, you know, me, me and Kevin, you know, and, and the rest is history. History and Jarrett have a great relationship. His freshman year, he won MAC Offensive Rookie of the Year, rushing for 1,000 yards. His sophomore year, he broke the University at Buffalo single season rushing record with 1,799 rushing yards. And when things seemed like they couldn't get better, his junior year, Jarrett tied the NCAA record for eight rushing touchdowns in a game. In six games total, he amassed 19 rushing touchdowns, ranking third in the entire NCAA next to players who played a full 11 to 13 game season. Even with this insane resume, Jarrett still faces doubters as he enters the 2021 draft. Proving himself right is nothing new, and he wants to leave that mindset for the next two-star recruit to pick up on. The kids, you know, in Buffalo, you know, thinking they don't have that exposure, you know, it's going to come, you know. Like I said, just take care, take care of what you can, you know, take care of, which is hard work, control what you can control. And like I said, that exposure gonna come. Just keep putting in work and stay ready, you know, so you don't have to get ready. Cause just, you gotta push, you know, to your limits, even when you can't push no more. And that's the 1%, you know, the 1% is just, everything you do is elite. Yeah, it's big, you know, to me being a role model, you know, in Maryland and even in Buffalo, you know, just, just, just having that, that positive, you know, role model that some, the kids can look up to and, and you know, just say that, yeah, I wanna, I wanna, you know, get to where he's at. And, and I'm just, and I'm just here to say that, that you can do that, it, it's, it's very achievable. Thank you for supporting Greenlight. Make sure you share and subscribe to keep everybody up to date on our local stars.